All right, another Q and A or our second Q and A. We got a few more questions, but we need more. We need more questions from bring everybody. Em, bring it on. It could be about anything. You know, yep. we so, got some good ones. I think we got some good ones today. We got some decent ones. I got a few from our converter reclaim branch. Let me go into the photos. And this is these are pretty common uh, accusations and questions that we get. So here's one. So okay. do you all buy a lot of stolen catalytic converters? Because it looks that way. That's <laughs> from Randy Johnson. Thanks, Randy. Randy Johnson, the pitcher for the uh, the old the Hall of Fame uh, right-handed pitcher, right? Um, that's a good question. I think we used to we used to get that question about copper, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when copper was being stolen, you know, pretty heavily in 08, 09, You know, we were obviously you know being in the recycling business, we are big copper buyers, mm -hmm. and as much as you want to say no, we don't buy anything stolen. It is one of those deals that you you're basically trying to decide with your customer base. You're trying to do the best job you can, do the much due diligence with your customer on the material, on what the customer has to offer you for proof of ownership to make a good decision. Are there unscrupulous converter buyers out there? Absolutely. Just like there's unscrupulous co copper buyers, right? Mm -hmm. Us as a company, we've invested a significant amount of money in vetting our customer base. So we buy converters from every single state. And in doing so, we actually have to run basically a background check and run it against those individuals. So and background check, not like you would run through the FBI, but basically driver's license, picture of the converters, address, bank information, registration of the vehicle or title of the vehicle that all have to match up with those converters is basically to extend out the due diligence process. So have we bought a stolen converter unknowingly? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, and I would I would basically go to bat and say, have we bought a stolen converter knowingly? 1000% no. And, and we buy a lot of converters. So... I see that question a lot on social media. Yeah. Like people are always accusing us of that. We have a video out there right now of us uh, using our decanter to decan what appears to be a new looking converter. We did a little bit of research to figure out where that one came from. Yep. It came from a tow company. That vehicle, I think it was a VW, it was in a wreck. It got totaled out by the insurance. What are they supposed to do with it after that? Just not recycle we the We cut a lot of new-ish converters yeah. like because we we a own auto salvages mm -hmm. we buy converters from auto salvages and auto auto salvages produce and tow companies mm -hmm. produce wrecked vehicle converters and some of these cars are getting wrecked with five thousand ten thousand miles on them and anybody knows that anything knows the mileage on a car and you look at that converter it can look like a dang near brand new converter yeah. and really it's pretty new but because of the laws, the way that the laws are structured in the United States, you are not allowed to resell a converter for as an automotive part. Mm -hmm. It's the only part on a car, which used to be airbags, used to be the same way. And they actually went through and made to where you can resell airbags. But the converter is the only part of the vehicle that you are not allowed to resell as an automotive part. Because mm -hmm. we get that a lot. Too. Yeah. People are like, why don't you reuse it? Because we can't. It's we against can't. the law. Yep. We are doing everything in our power to deter theft and to create a system where we, if we do unknowingly buy one, we have all the documentation to help the police prosecute because that's the next step if you're really going to help slow this thing down. I've got one for you that came in, okay. and this is this is uh, more along the marketing lines. It's one of my uh, connections, <clears throat> Gary Johnson from Johnson Auto Records Plus. Um, he must be related to Randy Johnson. Yeah, in that previous we got question. a lot of Johnsons <laughs> today. Yeah. Um, lots of big Johnsons with questions. <laughs> so uh, the question is, and and he, and he asked me, and and he actually he actually asked me via Instagram. So you can hit me up on Instagram, ask me any questions. Mm -hmm. If it's something I have a direct knowledge about, I'll answer the question. If it's something that I know somebody that's smarter than me, which is most people, can answer better than me, then I'll ask the question. So this one 
was along the lines of our marketing and podcast. And uh, Gary said, hey, Brett, what do you guys use to edit your podcast? Is he's, he, is he's inspired to start a podcast on mm-hmm. the for the automotive recycling industry. So, Nick, Bug Auto Salvage. take it away. Yep. Okay. So, we had a lot of trials and tribulations. Usually, most of it was my fuck-ups on how to get this done. And the editing part of it, when me and Jay were doing it, we used um, Apple's product. Um, oh, what's that called? What can I think of it? Um, so, I asked the question. And I know. You know I know the answer. Um, no pressure. We're just, Gary's waiting for <laughs> not, your response. Not the iMovie one. Final Cut Pro. Okay. Which is, a, iMovie comes free to everybody. Yeah. But you really can use that. iMovie's really powerful. But to really dial in, you got to do that. You got to go over there. Now, Sky, who's awesome at it, better than me and Jay ever were at editing all that. Okay. She uses Adobe Premiere. Now, it goes a little deeper, though. You have to go on, we use Spreaker to get it posted everywhere, then we upload it to YouTube. Okay. And that's important, because you you don't have to use it, that's like 20 bucks a month. You have to use that to get it dumped over to everything. Mm -hmm. It's like using a social media manager, that thing posts everywhere for you. So first of all, you have to record the podcast. Record it. So record it, you know, get a a camcorder, record it. camcorder. The next thing you gotta do is figure out the uh, editing software you want to use. So you gotta get the mics. So you get the mics. So we, we had a hiccup there. Anyone listening, try and do it. We bought USB mics, and that went went wrong. We needed the XLR mics that dump into a separate recording device, and that really, if you get someone that's so much quieter than a different speaker, you can pump up their volumes. Yeah. The U- USB mics were dumping it all into one file. But even then, like, let's just get like. Uh, Back all, off all the technical, if you are just beginning and you're just trying to get some post produced, like you can take your cell phone and record voice memo, voice memo it, and then get a Spreaker account mm-hmm. and upload it. I mean, we get a little more technical. We've got we have a few more podcasts and some stuff mm-hmm. going on. But if you're just getting started and you kind of want to just kind of mm-hmm. dip your foot in the water, then voice memo it, get a Spreaker account. And upload it, you know? Get yourself an intro. People out there doing voiceovers, if you want an intro mm-hmm. or something, cut a little bit of video if you want to put it on YouTube, mm-hmm. and boom, you're off to the races. You don't even need all the shit we're talking about. And as you get doing it, just like us, like you learn from your mistakes, and you get better, you buy, and then when you want to, you can upgrade your equipment, just like we did. As I, And I got, I mean, we have so many different podcasts that we had to learn from. Yeah. Just go do it. Is all you gotta do, do the work. Get Spreaker. That's going to make your life easy. All right, everybody. Thanks for the questions. We've got more next week that we'll go over. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up on the text line, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We'll dig out the questions and uh, get them answered for you. Keep them coming. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody.